All right, welcome back to Stand Firm. Father Josh Waltz, uh, still reacting to <laughs> great videos, some not so great. Let's get into it. Have you ever heard of bed rotting? It's something <laughs> no. that I learned about last week, but it's something I've been doing for years off and on. And Yuck. I didn't know it had a name for it. I just thought it was like just depression. And I'm sure you've been doing this too. I it's a not. form of self-care. But you shouldn't do it too often because apparently it can be laziness. <laughs> but, but basically it's where you just sit or lay in bed all day. You can eat snacks, watch Max. But some of the girlies, they like high tech and high end version where they like do skincare and yeah. some spa treatments just from their bed. Normally in the past, if I stayed in bed all day, I would feel so guilty. But now that I've learned that this is a thing, <laughs> I'm no longer going to feel guilty for bed rotting. That is We awful. have been conditioned to be productive members of society for so long. Sometimes you just oh. want to lay in bed and do nothing. Oh, Lord. And that is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to work on my business. I'm going to film these videos. And I'm going to watch TikTok all from the comfort of my own bed. Call me lazy if you want to. I don't care. I've earned it. It's Juneteenth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is so the That, you guys, is what is wrong with America right now. Like it's th that's that's entitled self care. I love when she said some people might call it laziness. I would definitely call it laziness. Here's the deal: like I think our culture has got us to a point where, like, we don't work hard for anything, anything, and it's in us. That's the thing. We know it's in us, man. Like one of the things I got, I kind of got on a deep dive. Uh, you know what's kind of funny about this whole thing? I hate TikTok. I don't have TikTok, and these jerks are making me watch TikTok and, and anyway, and respond to these things. So anyway, I did this deep dive on just athletes and, and, and I just want to share two, two, there's a bunch of them. I mean, anywhere from Michael Jordan to, to Wayne Gretzky, Tom Brady, but the ones I, I the, the two that I really got kind of like this deep dive on was, was Tom Brady and, and Wayne Gretzky. You know, when Wayne Gretzky, when he, when he like got in, to the NHL, he was quoted as saying, I shouldn't even have been able to make the NHL because I couldn't skate fast enough. He's like, I wasn't the best player out there. And yet this man works his tail off, right? <clears throat> and at the end of his life, the guy has 2,857 points. For you, those of you that don't watch hockey or know anything, the next closest person, there's two of them, they tied, is Yarmir Yager, and Mark Messier, and they had 1,887 points. And they had 1,887 points at 44 years old when they retired. Wayne Gretzky had 1,887 points when he was 28. The guy was a phenom, right? But he worked and worked. Here's the other one, Tom Brady. I'm sure a lot of football players, if anybody watches this, you know this, but he was, you know, 199th in the draft. And his write-up is hilarious. If you ever read his write-up, it says, poor build, skinny, lacks physical stature, lacks mobility. He has no ability to avoid the rush, not a strong arm, can't drive the ball, can't throw a tight spiral, gets knocked down easily. <laughs> like this guy has the worst write up ever. And yet somehow this man is the greatest, say what you want. You can, I'm sure there's gonna be comments all over the place. He is the greatest quarterback of all time. One of the things that, that struck me about Tom Brady is Bill Belichick, who I, I really don't like. I don't like Tom Brady, but I really don't like Bill Belichick. Not like his person, just him, if that distinction makes sense. But <clears throat> anyway, Bill Belichick did this interview, and he said what made Tom Brady the greatest of all time, it was not his, like, f like his ability. It was his work. It was his heart. And I think our hearts have gotten to a place that are so pathetically lazy that we can rationalize that stuff and actually make it sound like self-care. Now, look, I got no problem with sleeping in. I got no problem with relaxing. Relaxing is good. But this, if, if they title it bed rotting, that's more than a day. That's <laughs> if you're rotting in your bed, that's you're there for a long time. Okay. And there's a lot of people, you know, I just don't have the strength to get up. You change your heart, you change everything, right? You can change your physical, physical surroundings all you want, but if your heart never changes, you're not going to change. That's the biggest thing. And this is the last thing. Tom Brady, right? 
Bill Belichick said there were three things that made him the greatest of all time. Number one, he knew the game better than anybody knew it. He would, they, they said that he, they would find him studying the game like crazy. He would be, when everybody left, he was still there. He was watching film. He was, I mean, he, he knew it better than anybody. Second, he practiced more than anyone. And he didn't expect anything from others that he himself wouldn't do. This is a recipe for success, folks, right? Practice, know the game. What's the game? Life, know it inside and out. Practice it. How do we practice? By living our faith. And third, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick said he is never out of the game. And we saw that when they, whoever they played and they beat, was it the Atlantic Falcons, I think, right? He came back. And uh, you see that guy on the sideline, he's down 21 points, and he's screaming at people like, we are not out. We are still in this. And that is a heart that we need right now in the faith. Because there's a lot of people are like, man, the church is dying. Things are falling apart. And they just rot. They're rotting. Instead of saying, no, there's fight in us. Get up. Let's start moving. Let's start doing. We're the church. The gates of hell can't prevail against us. Last time I checked, man, gates, you know, they're there to defend. They're not on the offensive. Okay? The gates of hell are defensive. So we should be attacking. Practice more than anybody. Know the game. And ultimately, you're never out of the fight. Thanks for watching. Don't ever do bed routing. <laughs>